y'all so good evening good evening good evening it is tuesday and welcome to another episode of a little tea time with me jerick aka jarius d your favorite published author's favorite published author um i am excited about tonight's show because we are going to be conversating and kicking it with mr mark pew in a bit but before we start, let's get into tonight's show. Um, it is still Pride Month, so shout out to all my LGBTQ viewers who are getting to watch the show. Um, I, I just I appreciate everyone who takes out their time, whether you're LGBTQ, black, white, or no matter who you are, if you watch this show, thank you so much for everyone who tunes in, to everyone who supports what I do here with a little tea time. And y'all do not forget to like love and share tonight's show right um with that being said i want to also encourage people to remember to love yourself love yourself i've been hearing some some doggish things about people and um it just placed me in this position that i just wanted to just put that friendly reminder out there that y'all we have to continue to love ourselves right cool um, I'm going to get into today's word of the day. Today's word of the day. Are y'all ready for today's word of the day? Today's word of the day is smorgasbord. Smorgasbord. Smorgasbord is a noun from the Swedish 19th century, and it means a buffet offering a variety of hot and cold meats, salads, and hors d'oeuvres. So think of Smuggers Board as um, your favorite pizza buffet, your favorite restaurant buffet, your favorite sushi buffet that offers a variety of things that you like to eat. I feel like um, there are restaurants that have a smuggish board for everything that you like so see how i try to incorporate that into my english language speaking vocabulary i would love to encourage you guys to also try to adopt smuggish board into your english language speaking vocabulary all right um song of the week i'm excited about song of the week because i've had some time to listen to this song this song is right now doing things on youtube and has um i want to say the song probably already hit the radio but i'm not 100 i heard it for the first time today on the radio so she's one of my favorite people in the world y'all already know who i am about to talk about beyonce with her new single break my soul um i am very excited about this single because it's just what someone who is in that space of knowing you're not gonna break me you can't defeat me this song is perfect for everyone around the world who have those sentiments right now and with everything that's going on y'all we have to remember to stay vigilant about our mental health so do not let someone break your soul because beyonce wrote the song produced the song song the song and put out that song for you so remember, song of the week is going to be on saying, break my soul. So definitely would love to hear, have you guys get out there and check it out. I've already been listening to it. I'm encouraging other people to listen to it. So y'all get into it, right? Um, Heading over to SaucySonyaSpices.com. If you have not yet, head over to Spice, uh, Sonya's, 
saucysoniaspices.com and use my coupon code a little tea time one word and receive five percent off of your purchases you can also check out her cookbook chef saucy spot as cookbook available right now on the website and you can use their coupon code july fun and receive 15 percent off of your purchases when you shop on the site with them right now right so y'all get over there to that website check everything out shop with them spend your money with them support and endorse them the way that i do right um again we're going to be continuing to shout out artists this week mr willie loke and dizzy d with their single man cry um i'm a fan of what they're doing right now and i just want to continue to support what they're doing um also shout out to miss sweet nay who is also doing great things with her music and her single thick thigh also doing some great things um just saw her on the news not even an hour ago um shout out to miss Shana d music i know that she's going to be doing some music um i want to say for the fourth this weekend coming up so congratulations to her and all that she's doing with her shows so Shana d music continue to put it down sis um shout out to ego tripping and official patience with their single above ground also doing great numbers right now i've been listening to the music here and there and it's definitely a great message song so y'all definitely love to encourage people to check out above ground right now on youtube um also 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 um shout out to ego tripping with his new music video for ricochet and he's about to release his new single this week for Never Promise Tomorrow, dropping July the 1st. So I know that he's definitely gearing up to do some things. So y'all stay tuned for everything Ego Tripping is about to bring to the scene, all right? Um, also, shout out to Miss Marche318 on Spotify right now with her single, Better Days. I know that she's also doing some great things right now with her music. And um, I just want to continue to support her and lift her up here on the little tea time. Um, I just ran into her yesterday. Shout out to Miss Mimsy MC, who is also working on some things. I know that she's definitely doing some great things with her album, The Marsh, also. So shout out to you. Um, and y'all continue to keep me posted on this music that's going. I want to also send shout outs to Miss nisa with her single titled love me not also doing some great things uh shout out to you miss nisa such a fan of what she's doing right now down there in the home in her hometown of Minden. and i know that they just had an event this past weekend which i'm sure was a success so congrats to her and everything that they're doing down in Minden. um tonight i want to talk about a an artist that is not getting a lot of attention from what I know. Um, but he is definitely doing great things right now. Um, I have to shout out to Mr. Andre O'Cray. He is a gospel rapper and an artist from right here in Shreveport, Louisiana. And he's definitely doing some great numbers right now with, um, with what he's doing. I know he's been doing a lot of performances, promoting his music. So I just want to continue to just um promote him and lift him up here on a little tea time and this is my first time speaking on mr andre o'cray with everything that he's doing with his music so if y'all are interested in gospel rap music andre o'cray is definitely a great artist that fits that mold that fits that genre and um, i definitely want to encourage y'all to just get into what andre o'cray is doing if y'all see him around in the streets and y'all know him y'all are familiar with him shout him out Send them your love. Right? Um, and you can also check out all of these artists that I just called out. You can check them out on Facebook, on Instagram, um, iTunes, and Apple Music. If y'all are trying to get familiarized with them, the information is out there. Y'all just type search them, get into them. Right? Um, we are still, still, still celebrating everything. Hand basket scene right now. Um, all LGBTQ writers, this is a call for submissions for a handbasket zine issue number 13, 
there is no place like home. Describe your hometown or your state. What are your memories from there? And send your 400 to 700 word essays by July 16th to handbasketzine at gmail.com. And shout out to Taylor B and everybody over there at the Handbasket Zine brand. I know they are working and doing their damn due diligence. So congrats to y'all. And um, let's continue to put in that work over there, Handbasket Zine. Um, shout outs to Miss Cherie Gray of Lumpy Grits Artistry and everything that she's doing right now with the Ratchet City Blues documentary. Um, I know that things are definitely underway with what she's cooking up for that Ratchet City Blues doc. So I hope everyone is staying tuned, staying connected for that, because the shit's going to hit the fan. And it's going to be a doc that y'all don't want to miss. Um, Now, on to the event shout out. Um, the Wild Man School presents Hot Girl Summer first Sunday comedy and brunch. That is going to be this Sunday, July the 3rd. The show starts at 2 p.m. and is hosted by photographer Miss Run Brown at the Laugh Out Loud Comedy Club. If y'all have not yet gotten your tickets, I know that he is definitely promoting. And I got to fly you here to promote on a little tea time. So I am sharing with you guys here on a little tea time tonight. Get those tickets for Hot Girl Summer. First Sunday comedy and brunch happening this Sunday. All right. Shout out to Wild Man School. Um, happening this Saturday, Bears Fest at Bears is going down from 1 p.m. until 4 a.m. I know that they are going to be having a host of different vendors and artists who are going to be in the building for their event. So definitely want to, to encourage you guys to get over to Bears this weekend and have some fun with them and their event. Um, Saturday, July the 9th, the Shreveport Writers Club, we will be having our meeting coming up on the 9th. Um, and I'm looking forward to hanging out with the crew because I haven't had time to get with the Shreveport Writers Club and just chat it up and chop it up with them. So I'm definitely looking forward to catching up with them. So if y'all are a member of the Shreveport Writers Club or if you're thinking about becoming a member of the Shreveport Writers Club, definitely want to invite invite you guys to come by and hang out with us if you're wanting more information about our street Bar writer clubs meetings please inbox me or inbox miss tiffany pennywell about the street Bar writers club also the soul of the city series featuring mr j brown and band at 318 lake street it's also going down. I want to encourage people to get those tickets right away, right away, right away. If you have not yet gotten your tickets, I'm sure Jay Brown and the band would love to have you guys come out and celebrate with them. So definitely would love to have, encourage you guys to be in the place. Right? On to my Facebook follower birthdays. I want to send a happy birthday out to Miss Mariam and to Mr. Charles who are my Facebook followers that are celebrating their birthdays today. So happy birthday to y'all. I want to encourage you guys to stay tuned for other shows this week. We also have Mr. Shelf, Melvin Nelson, who's going to be on the show this week. So I definitely would love to encourage you guys to tune in for that. Now, with that being said, I am ready to introduce my guest for tonight. Um, I've had an opportunity to do some comedy with this brother, to do roast battles with this brother. Um, we worked on a movie that will be coming out soon. And um, he's just an all-around good guy that I've been getting to know around in the city, out on the scene. With that being said, I don't know if he's out there, but if he is out there, I am ready to bring him in, Mr. Mark Q. Mark, are you out there? It's time to get you in on a little tea time. All right. I think he's ready. I think he's ready. Hmm.
Hey, Mark, did you just try to send the ad? I think that was you that was trying to send it. And thank you to everybody who's tuning in tonight. Thank y'all to everybody tuning in. I appreciate everybody tuning in, man. It, it means a lot to me that y'all take out of y'all time to tune into the show. Y'all can be anywhere in the world, and you're here with me. So I appreciate y'all taking out your time and your energy for being here. Couldn't add, guess this person was unable to join because of technical difficulties. Okay, I am showing up. Okay, what's going on? All right, should be getting something. All right, what's happening? <clears throat> I don't know what was going on before, but we're here now. Yes, sir. Welcome to a little tea time. Man, thank you for having me. Now, you're the famous man around town. No, <laughs> I wish people would stop saying that. I'm not. Yeah, you are. I appreciate it. <laughs> Your name rang like bells around here, friend. Oh, shit, I'm, I'm trying to uh, make the money match that. You dig what I'm saying? That boy, keep working at it. You got it. We still working, man. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Hang, hang. Got energy up just in time for the show, so I'm good. I ate a little something, so I'm pretty feeling good now. See, that's why I messed up. It. I ain't eat. I ain't ate since early. Now you gotta put some on your tummy. Yeah, I know, man. I know. I've been fucking up. I mean, I've been effing <laughs> up. <laughs> go be good. You go be good. But when you done, you might wanna go get you some meat. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to cook it. Uh, just to give people a little bit more background, I have been doing comedy for the last couple of weeks with this man here. We it's have been about been, just a month now, huh? Yeah, a couple of months, a couple of months. Yeah, yeah. I'd say about 90 days. Probably about 106. Yeah. yeah, give yeah. it a take. Give it a take. Uh, have had the opportunity to do roast battles back and yeah, forth, yeah. bro. And uh, I, I see him like a, a bro that's teaching me how to get into this comedy game right now. Oh, yeah. We we learn from each other, my nigga. Definitely, definitely. And you have a lot of people who are supporting you for tonight's show. And when the fly you went up, people went crazy. Yeah, yeah, the nigga was like, well, I'm glad I seen it last week. I was like, bro, what you talking about? But then I was like, oh, the date was at the 23rd and the 28th and shit. So I was, niggas, they was yeah. online about it. Yeah, I um I was designing your flyer last night and designing other flyers for other guests. Nah, man, I, I, I understand how it be. It be it be like that sometime. Sure. Just all over the place. But um yeah, dude, I didn't know how funny you was until I actually started coming to your shows. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm 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 a little stupid. Hey, stupid ain't the word. I can't say the other word. I don't want to get the show canceled. I don't want to say retarded and make somebody mad. Oh no 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 that's not let's not say that. Oh yeah, see. No, there are sensitive types out there. Yeah. But um bad, bro. you good. Oh, uh, I can definitely say I've had the best fucking time doing these roast battles. Oh yeah, yeah. When me and you go in, it's like everybody's expected to see some heavyweight shit. <laughs> well, they already know because they before the show start. We be talking a lot of shit, so they already know, like, okay, yeah, them two of the best shit talkers in the building. Let's put them against each other. And I have to consistently say it every single time. These are just jokes. Hell yeah. I take this shit <laughs> personal. Man. <laughs> some people don't know. Some people forget. They're like, oh, these are just jokes. And some people get, like, really uptight about it, but I get it. I feel, I yeah, like, we won't talk about him on my show. Nah, nah, nah. Nah, wait, nah. <laughs> He's okay. He's okay. You made somebody leave. I forgot about that. Yeah, you made somebody leave. Yeah, again, again, I did not make him leave. He left. He he left because you said some words that he he didn't appreciate. Again, sensitive type. Yeah, so yeah. he cannot handle the jokes because I specifically said these are just jokes. Do not take this shit personal. You say it every time. He took it personal. Hey. And I think for me too, 
um I was in the zone that particular night. Yeah, you was going out. Was that the night you won? I think that no, I didn't win that night, but I won against him. Oh yeah, you definitely won against him. Um, yeah, that was a good night for comedy for me. That was hilarious. Um, but we're gonna get into the interview because we yeah. we'll have time to talk more about that and, and all that later. Um, so Mr. Pew, tell the people at home a little bit more about yourself. Uh, let's see, what can I say? I've been uh, I've been drawing since I could pick up a pencil, so I've really been in the art my whole life, and. <clears throat> I don't know, I just started to pick up different things and I'll latch on to them. Uh, specifically with comedy, I think my first time doing it, I used to watch a lot of like Martin and Fresh Prince and Eddie Murphy movies and stand up. And I see, you know, just growing up black, you see a lot of different stuff. And a lot of that, for some reason, I was always that kid where I saw something. If I was inspired by somebody, I was always like, I want to be able to do that and make somebody else feel how I feel watching them. So I watch a lot of Eddie Murphy. Um, and I think the first time I got on stage was maybe in the fourth grade, fourth or fifth grade for a talent show. I wrote like three jokes. And on stage, I forgot my third joke. And in the midst of forgetting it, I just pulled like a professional move. I didn't even know it was a professional move at the time, but I just made something up on the spot. My last joke, and it worked out. And then ever since then, I was just like, yeah, I want to do this. But I didn't hit the stage again until like maybe, well, I take that back. I did some stuff at church, um, and I've done plays and stuff, but I didn't really take it serious for real, for real again until maybe five years ago. Mm -hmm. So yes, yeah, as far as comedy goes, I've, I've picked that up. But I used to, I used to just love it. I fall asleep watching Comedy Central all the time or whatever. Any kind of stand up, I just listen to it in the background. So okay, so I'm gonna ask a, I'm gonna ask a probably a, a rhetorical question. Did you watch South Park? Oh, for sure. Yeah, 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 for sure. Good shit. Good shit. Good shit. <laughs> Good shit. Yeah. Um, so you've been doing comedy since you were basically in the fourth grade. Pretty much, technically speaking, yeah. That's your entire life, friend? Yeah, it's my whole life, man. Okay. I'm, I'm, wow, I'm impressed. I didn't know that, man. I don't, I, I never really, dis I didn't never really talk about it until, I didn't really talk about doing stand-up for real, for real. Like, I thought about it from, like, fourth grade to now, but <clears throat> I didn't really talk about it for years, probably until about five years ago. Until, well, actually, three years ago publicly because even when i started to do it for real i always kept like comedy at real close to my chest like that was like my baby everybody knew i drew everybody knew i made music and all that stuff but with stand up that's something i like guarded because i was like nah like, it was something about it yeah because yeah. um little birds on the street have told me that you also are are into music yeah. um that you you do a couple of things besides just the comedy yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's quite a bit. It's sometimes people remind me that I do stuff that I forget I do. So I don't, and I don't really be advertising it either. So like everybody that know me, a lot of people uh, find out I do other stuff like two, three years into the friendship and shit. So it just, I it for me it's like I don't. I I get weird about it too because I don't want to feel pretentious and be like, well, yeah, I do thirty thousand things. You know what I'm saying? But I still care about it, so it just come up and. I, I think it's a detriment too that I don't advertise myself like that, but it just I, I do it with or without the money, you know what I'm saying? Like everything I do, I love to do it. So that part. Now, just recently we were yeah. all on a set together. Yeah, yep. For the blind. Yeah, that was uh <laughs> that was a very hilarious day. It was hot. Yeah. That was hilarious. Me, you Clyde, who else was there? Marcus yeah. Wayne. Marcus Wayne, my boy. Uh, Bunch of people I never met before, but you know. Bunch of people I had never met that day. Yeah. And uh, I came through that set with that leather hat all burned up. Hey, like, man. <laughs> hey, man. I remember when you, because we were all sitting, we were all sitting outside, and then you walked in, because this is before I knew you was coming. 
Mm -hmm. You was you walked in. I, no, no, no. I take that back. I saw you because you was in the second group. So then I didn't know what they was gonna put you in. They dressed us and they had us sitting outside. And uh, I, I remember you walking. <laughs> I remember you walking to the uh, to the snack line. Uh, I, was like, I swear it was like you were so far down. I, all I seen was your outfit. I was like, who granddaddy is this? <laughs> I was like, what? They had my boy with the hat on, with the leather Kango hat on, with the belt. Hey, hey, you were 70s clean, cuz. You were 70s clean. I was like, yeah, nah. It's, I was finna go speak to whoever uncle this is. And it was you. I was like, I had no idea it was you. I was like, get the fuck out of here. And I promise I felt like my dad that entire day. <laughs> Me too. I was like, yeah, this is definitely how my dad dressed. Yeah, pretty yeah, much. It's like the Jackson 5 and shit. I had bell oh, bottom jeans on. Uh, and just the fact that he was on that set, we laughed and hung out more than it felt like. It didn't feel like we were working that day. Nah, it not until we was in the sun. Yeah, then it felt like work. Yeah, and the building was hot. The uh, not the not the building where we chilled at, but the uh, the on the set mm -hmm. inside that little club, or whatever. <laughs> no. Yeah, I, I want them beers to be real. Man, I'm glad they weren't, cause I'd have been drunk. We've been towed up. No cap. Teed up for real. People would have been hot, would have passed out. <laughs> they would have got a new movie. They would have got a different movie out of us. Yeah. Yeah, because I would have been a little sloppy and lazy. Man. But we had a great fucking time that day. No, it was cool. It was cool. It was real. It, that was my first time being on like what felt like a legit like film set. Mm -hmm. That was cool to feel Hollywood for like five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I can definitely say I felt, felt famous that day. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do yeah. you know if they're having a premiere? I, I want to know about that. I was going to ask you that. You beat me to the question. Oh, shit. Well, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah, because I just want I just want to see what that what that brown leather hat doing that movie. <laughs> oh, man. I know they got me looking crazy in that shit. Dude. I, I don't know how we look. We don't know how we look until we see it. Yeah, no, nah, they don't show. They don't show nothing. They don't show a screenshot. They don't send it to be approved. If you look crazy, you just look crazy. I just hope I ain't have no bug or something in my nose. Well, Which I'm trying to use. Nah, nah, that bit would have fell out as hot as it was. You know? <laughs> yeah, nah, you, you, you'd have been alright. Yeah. All right. My whoever my uh. Whoever I sat across from, because you know we had the fake talk, you know, mm -hmm. in the background, so we had the fake talk. And the lady who, one of the waitresses, kept coming to our tables talking real loud. I'm like, lady, you ain't supposed to say words. You just supposed to move your mouth. And she asked me questions, like, how is your family? I'm like, bitch, I don't know you. <laughs> Drop the drink off and go to the next table. Hey, this uh, is man, I had crazy. so much fun that day. I think we laughed more than, I think we laughed and ate more than anything they did. A hundred percent. They gave us one chicken sandwich in a box. We not going to talk about them that bad. It was cool. <laughs> nah, nah, it was, it was, it was real chill, man. I, I enjoyed my Chick-fil-A salad in my Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you got the salad? I ain't, uh -huh. I should have got that salad. Yeah, and them cookies were legit too that day. Yeah, some, who was, somebody got like real OD mad about them cookies. It was some old white dude. <laughs> somebody, I forgot what happened. It was something that pissed me off because, like, niggas think that just because you like on set, like you ain't, like you ain't still a nigga. Like, bro, like you can't be coming here at your safe job and talk to me crazy. Stop. I don't remember nah. what it was, but yeah, yeah, I just remember being mad. That part. Shout out to everybody who was on set that day. No cap, except yeah. that one dude. But hell yeah, everybody else. Except for that. Yeah, I'll say just that one dude. But yeah. we, we fucked shit up today. Oh, for sure. For sure. So, the next question is, when you are not doing all of your many talents, mm -hmm. what do you do for fun? What do I do for fun? Uh, <clears throat> dang, if, really, if I'm not doing that, because a lot of that stuff is therapeutic or just fun, uh, if I'm not doing that, I'm probably eating, uh, watching a movie or something. Or just going out with the homies or something like that. Or probably with somebody, baby mama. One of the one of the four. That part. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I pretty much, like, what I pretty much be doing all the time, if I'm not really, I don't really go out that much, but if I do, 
uh, just with the homies, or I'm just by myself, uh, some event or something, or I'm creating, because that's really what I like to do. I like to make shit. Got you, got you. So I know you kind of spoke on what inspired you into doing comedy, but um, in this next question, just kind of elaborate just a little bit. Okay. Um, what inspired you to develop your idea to be in a comedy, a comedian? Um, it was, all right, so I think it's in different parts. So the first part when I was young, before fourth grade, you know, I grew up, I was born in uh, 91. So I pretty much was able to absorb a lot of like 80s movies because of reruns and then a lot of 90s shit. I just grew up with the 90s. So there was, that was a great, the 70s, 80s and 90s was a, were, were great area, eras for comedy. And I was able to, just from having older parents too, and just seeing a lot of stuff, my taste palette was kind of broad. I watched TV with everything, anything from like Turner Classic Movies to Disney Channel to BET. So I had a, like a broad palette of a lot of stuff I liked. And uh, a lot of my earlier influences, like I said, Eddie Murphy, I watched a lot of Eddie Murphy movies and his stand up. Uh, you know, I saw, when did I see Delirious? I never saw Raw until I got older, but I saw Delirious. And that was one of my favorite stand-ups for a long time. And I remember seeing a lot of like Bernie Mac, uh, shoot, even just like uh, Def Comedy Jam, stuff like that. So that was, that brought me into, oh, Martin too. I'm watching the Martin Show, one of my all-time favorites. So that kind of brought me into the era of just being like a real uh, joking child. Like I always said, like crazy shit. And like it never really, you know what I'm saying? So it's like. It didn't even really hit my mind to be a comedian until I think I saw Delirious for the first time when I was young. And then that was around fourth grade. And I was like, yeah, I want to do that. I want to try that. So I did that. And then I got older. And it always was in the back of my mind and in my heart. But I never said I wanted to do it like after that. Uh, did a few plays uh, and did a few things. Like I spoke at, I used to speak at church a lot. And then you know, I did a lot of community theater um, up until college. Um, I worked with a guy named, uh, he's going to kill me for not remembering his name right now. I know somebody in the comments is going to remind me. My, my, my brain is trash. It's charged to my brain, not my heart. But uh, Vincent Williams. I used to do a lot of plays with Vincent Williams. Uh, real solid dude. Um, and then as I started to uh, just grow older, like the, that itch of like doing comedy, you know, like Dave Chappelle became one of my favorite comedians. So I'm the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He and like just the way he was like very he was a black dude who wasn't like always doing like the for lack of a better word, the coonery comedy. And I'm not mm -hmm. shitting on it, but like then he wasn't doing a lot of hooping and hollering. He he yeah. had a lot of like thought provoking yeah. comedy. And he had a lot of shit jokes too, but it was something attached to what he was saying something. And I was like, damn, like you can do that. So I was like, nah, I, so I I kinda like molded a lot of my stuff after him and a lot of other people and there's a there's a there's a lot of uh other white comics too like lewis black uh lewis ck yes bill burr um shit. and i started to do a lot of research on older people like george carlin and um what's his face uh i can't right. I can't remember his name. he was he came up in the 50s or the 60s he got arrested for doing crude humor because at that time you know everybody's talking about cancel culture and shit now mm -hmm. Way crazier back then, cause it was he was a he was a comic. He was before prior and uh, Lenny Bruce. Lenny Bruce. Uh, if y'all don't know anything mm -hmm. about him, look him up. He got arrested for saying certain things that you couldn't say legally. He got arrested after a set, and he knew he was gonna get arrested, but he still was like, "Nah, I have to say this shit." So he went and said it, and you know he got arrested for it. Yada yada. He had a tragic life, cause a lot of government shit happened to him, but. Mm -hmm. He was a pioneer for a lot of people who talk shit for a living. You know what I'm saying? So learning about stuff like that kind of kind of made me elevated because I always felt like I had something to say, but I never wanted to say nothing frivolous to me. Like, I, I, I say a lot of frivolous shit to be funny, but I don't ever want to say something and try to be impactful and don't know what I'm talking about. You know yeah. What I'm so, like, I'm, I try to be – I don't talk much. I know it doesn't sound like it right now, but, like, I don't talk much just to talk. But when I when I try to have something to say, like I try to talk when I have something to say, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's that that mind state made me not think I was it would be good at hosting shows because I know a lot of hosting is not is a lot of frivolous talk, and I'm like, 
not the type of nigga just to have frivolous shit to say, but mm -hmm. developing that skill. It, it uh, really developing to answer your question. Developing the skill made me want to develop the skill more. You went and did your research, for sure, for sure. And and the then you just called out some some epic names, friend. Oh epic yeah, yeah. Names. Like oh, the that's 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 the standard, for sure, for sure. Oh, they are the standard of what comedy was, and oh, going yeah. into coming into the new era, Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle is one of my favorite comedians anyway because he is very thought provoking, mm -hmm. and Dave Chappelle made being smart cool. For sure, for sure that he made being smart cool, and he said shit that you'd be like, I ain't even think about it that way. Right, right, right. That ain't it. Oh, I'm a. I don't know if you've seen this. There is that, bro. Like you said that I did my research, it's so crazy because I never looked at it as research. Like anytime I get into something, I do deep dives on it. Like I get obsessed with that shit. So when it came to this comedy shit, like I have a, uh, I got a terabyte hard drive and I got a folder that just says comedy. And there's a bunch of like interviews and some comedy sets, but a bunch of interviews are like my favorite comics. I got a huge ass folder of Dave Chappelle shit. And there's an interview he did with uh, Maya Angelou. It's like an hour-long documentary about both of them. And they just talk. And it, bro, it's, I've watched this shit probably like 10,000 times. That shit is, I, if you, it's on YouTube too. It's just type in Dave Chappelle, Maya Angelou documentary or whatever. I think Sundance and IFC, one of them two, they did it, but it's, it's hard. Yeah, Maya Angelou, she's my favorite author. Hey. So. For for Maya Angelou and Dave Chappelle to sit and do an interview, it's tough. It's tough. That was some tough shit. Yeah. He, he was in the praises of greatness. Oh, for sure, for sure that. So the next question is, how did you decide when to establish your brand? Uh, long ago. I, long ago, I <clears throat> one of the things that I, I'm into is fashion and clothes, and. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't even think I've actually even developed it yet to this day because I like to keep everything separate. I don't want to be the, I don't want to be the rapping comedian clothes designer. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want that to be, I'd rather have like the clothes over here, comedy over here, rap over here, music, mm -hmm. this, you know what I'm saying? So it's hard. And I feel like I have like, I, I suffer from low key, multiple personality uh, disorder or whatever. Because oh. like my brain be split in so many different ways, and I don't. A lot of people have asked me to perform. Like, well, I know you do comedy. I do. You, I know you do music, man. You can rap, and then you can host the show. And I'm like, nah, nigga, I don't. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Like, I did it last week for my homie, just because like we was, it was all of all my homies that I haven't performed in a long time, music wise, were on set. Well, a lot of them were, and I just did one song. But I really don't like putting them all in the same light. So, I take branding very seriously, and that's also what takes me a long time to put shit out because i want it to be right and i don't want to just like put some shit out so if i'm doing some clothes i'm gonna do it and make sure the whole thing makes sense put it out that's why i got so many different instagram pages that have yeah, like i, I got the two main ones i use my personal one and the the clothing brand few studio but i got one for like some lemonade i doing shit like that but it's like it ain't the right time to be you yeah. know that shit. but you know i was doing my research for sure, for sure. I'm doing my research, and you definitely got got your hands in some pots. I was like, this, this, this nigga is famous. What in the fuck is going on? Man, I wish I believed that shit, bro. I I hear that a lot. Or I don't want to say a lot, but you know, I hear that quite often. I'm like, bro, it's I appreciate it, but I don't know. Man, like you 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 was out here doing something. I said, like, okay, I ain't yeah, mad. I'll be trying. I'm trying to figure out how can I be down. Hey, man. You are you already in game, bro. You already part of people as you did. That part. I, I'm just thinking about that event that I saw y'all at. Uh, what y'all went at the event that I was at? I saw y'all later that night, and I had on uh, uh, my um my African outfit. Oh, uh, nigga, what was that? What did we see you at? Oh, we was at. Uh, I want to say we was um at Strange. Y'all was coming out of Strange. Yeah, bro. I was very drunk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was it was the fact that when I saw y'all and I tried to make that damn beeline. Yeah, he was like, nah, nigga. 
<laughs> and I was like, you know what? Nah, don't even try. Bro, I forget. I know I said something. Bro, I was like, what did I say? Bro, I said something. Wild. It was just a roast. It was cool. Yeah, yeah. Nah, I, 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 Joppy I, Joppers. I got Joppy sure. Joppers. It was cool though. I accept it. Hell yeah. That was a great show that night. So. Oh, I yeah, want to um, <laughs> but I <didn't> my <laughs> Bro, I said, I Mark, I, I'm surprised. I'm surprised, like, ain't nobody like just caught me with a gun yet on stage. Like, I'll be don't I'll be, don't say that. Don't, let's not even speak that. Yeah, Words no. are I'm gonna Word. say this. They don't want to do that. But yeah. No, we don't need we don't need people trying to attack you like they did try to do Chappelle. We don't need that. You see how Chappelle like how how that happened with like dude got jumped on stage. A lot of people think they're gonna be Will Smith when they come up there, but they gotta understand they Chappelle shit gonna happen more than the Will Smith shit. They Chappelle shit gonna shut the stage down. Oh for sure. That's yeah, big yeah. yeah. They gonna drop it down. Power power on your ass and it's gonna be the end of the show. For sure, because my boy, whoever jumped on stage, they took that picture when he got arrested. They turned that boy into a cue because his arm was like doing this. They fucked my boy up. <laughs> well, they fucked my boy up. Don't jump on stage. This is, this is no, but this is even when even when you want to. Huh? Mm -hmm, the Oscars. Yeah, this ain't the Oscars, bro. We ain't performing at the Oscars. Bro. We, we oh no, nah. that's my face. Since you are a comedian. Yeah. Let's talk about the Oscars. Let's talk about it. What you want to know? Okay. This, you, I know you watched because every damn body on the planet watched. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't watch it live, but I, I was on Twitter. Like the, as soon as I opened Twitter, I saw all the videos. I was like, bro, ain't no way this real. But then like news sources started coming out, and people from overseas they started posting the real one. I was like, oh shit. So I was. I was. I was. At first, I was. I, I didn't believe that it was real. But then when I found out it was, I was like, damn. But I really, I, I don't think Will should have did that shit. I don't, I don't think he should have did that, man. I, in my opinion, I think he should have. I think you Chris think so? Rock should not have did that joke. You don't think so? I think Chris Rock should not have told that joke. Chris Rock did what comedians do, tell your joke. jokes. But I don't think he was expecting what was going to happen. Absolutely not. He did not. I don't and, think the joke was that good. It wasn't that great of a joke. I think it was more like he was more. He was just trying to. He was just talking shit. It was one of them passive like light jokes. But <clears throat> I think, given uh, whatever history they have and whatever history Will and Jada have, it was just it caused way more. Like if he hadn't have done, if Will hadn't have done what he did, nobody would have cared about the alopecia joke. Cause it wasn't even an alopecia joke. It was a bald head, a woman that has a bald head joke, and she just happened to have alopecia. But if Will hadn't slapped Chris, nobody would be talking about that joke. And at this particular point, I was just like, if that shit went on for like a week and a half. Oh, it's way too long. <laughs> a week and a half. For sure. Yeah, usually stuff be done in like two days. Yeah, that 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 changed the Oscars history. For sure. Yeah, and Oscar's history. Then he get he got banned for like ten years or something. No, he he actually resigned from the Oscars. But then they banned him too. No, they didn't know. ban him. He resigned. He resigned because they could have banned him. So he resigned and he gave them back his Oscar. I would have did that. No, but at the same time, I just I felt like when it went down. Everybody thought it was a, a media stunt. I thought it was a media stunt. Yeah. I wasn't surprised if it was. Yeah, no, then we heard the black words. Keep my wife's name out your mother effing mouth. And then it's like, nah, that's not stage. Nah, he said it twice. And twice. with passion. His voice quivered. He was he was he was very upset. Yeah. I I, I wanted to get your thoughts on it, because I I know I, I know you didn't see it, but when you heard, I know you was like. You know what? The aftermath would really bother me. The whole slap and where all the joke, none of that really affected me. What affected me was 
the opinions I started to hear from people. Certain words are just like, when people say certain things on the internet and say how they really feel, it makes me, it makes me feel bad because I'm like, dang, this like somebody actually thinks like this. Like mm-hmm. I can get two sides of a story, but some shit I see is just asinine. Like somebody was like, yeah, this just goes to show you that comedians are obsolete and they're not needed. And I'm like, how did you get that conclusion from that? Yeah, definitely. You know, so it was a, it was a lot of that, and then I saw some people just saying like, you know, comedians are corny and this, that, and the third. I'm like, a lot of people think that people who get up and tell jokes, no matter who they are, are uh, I don't know, like either weak or clowns. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. not everybody is that. There are a lot of people who use comedy as a place to feel whole, and it's that for me too. But that doesn't mean that a person is weak, or that you can just treat them as like whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, people. I've seen people leave worse. I've seen people leave worse comments on YouTube videos about serious stuff than the jokes I hear in comedy clubs. You know what I'm saying? So. When you get on stage, you're trying to make fun or make light of something. It's not saying that you're diminishing it, but you have people that get on comics and talk about people like dogs and shit, and it's cool. Like I, I don't know. Feel that, feel that. Now I'm gonna just kind of, I'm gonna stay in this lane, but I'm gonna kind of branch in another direction. Now yeah. I have been doing comedy with y'all for the last few months. Um, and people have been seeing videos that I have been posting out there from the sets that I have done. But you have been a person that have witnessed what I have done. Yeah. Give me a critique. Or give, give the people a critique. All right. Uh, let's see. What I start with. I'll, one thing that I will say is that you want to want to look for in a comedian. There's somebody that uh, goes up there no matter how they did the previous night or the last time they went and for somebody to keep coming and to say well, I'm not a comedian but you come back and you still try and you still make people laugh that's a good mark of somebody that's going to take it serious and a good comedian because you got people that have been doing it for 20 years I go up and working on a set and bomb and motherfuckers see that and think oh well, this nigga trash now nah, that's part of the game you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. so once you get comfortable with that part the rest of it is the rest of it is easy. Now just trying to figure out how to make the joke work. You are already a funny person and you already have like whatever that is that makes a person good at talking shit. You have that in you already and you got confidence. And that's the other half of it. So that that um really what you got to do now is you have your voice, but now you got to find your voice on stage as far as comedy goes. Mm. That's the process that takes the longest. You dig what I'm saying? You hear a lot of comedians when they first start out fucking uh, Eddie Murphy uh, he used to say people say this and Eddie Murphy would say this about himself when he first started out people could tell that he was good but he sounded too much like Richard Pryor but every comedian has that they have whoever they look up to they'll emulate that for so long most of them some people just come out the gate with their own personality it's just yeah. kind of fine. but even a lot of greats they'll be like well so and so is the reason why I did it and now I sounded like him for the first two years but then I found my own voice and then you know what I'm saying, so it it comes with it, man. But uh, I, I I've seen people that have been doing it for a long time, every day, that don't get better vocally to other people. But what's happening is they're building that resent resilience of being on stage and not really giving a fuck about other people. So uh, mm-hmm. a lot of people's downfall is uh, not being able to express what they want to say on stage like you'll practice your jokes at home and you'll be comfortable when you get on stage it's like you kind of run, not you specifically but people run through they sit and just be like oh the cat in the hat went down there and you can't really understand what they're saying instead of just saying the cat in the hat went down whatever whatever you gotta you know what i'm saying but it's nerve-wracking when you're up there and you know what you're supposed to say but you gotta make that shit sound like this is your first time saying it to a bunch of people so going back to you i think that would be uh the the most or the part that needs to be worked on the most as far as like having something to say and saying it comfortably no matter how comfortable you might be on stage you also gotta understand how you may be perceived to other people a lot of people miss jokes 
even though you spoke very eloquently, people miss jokes because they don't really understand what you're trying to say or how you're trying to say it. Biggest part is slowing down when you're on stage and taking breaths. You dig know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I, okay. feel, I feel like you got something to develop. And didn't even think I had a talent in it. How you do? Didn't think I had a, 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 a I had an area in that space to do comedy. Yeah, and yeah. Kept thinking about doing it. I was like, let's go see. Yeah, it sounded like you done got bit by the book. A little bit. Hell yeah. And then when it came down to my infamous rap of I ran off a comedian. Yeah, yeah. That's why I was like, maybe I could do this. Maybe I can do this. If you make somebody leave that's been doing comedy longer than you, then yeah, you probably should stick with it. I'm gonna keep working at it. For sure. Material no, all the time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm definitely gonna keep working at it, but I just wanna be coming back to that place that we work on. <laughs> I'm not gonna say me. I'll say that I was going to. Yeah. I have officially had it. Yeah, you done with it? Yeah, that it's not it's not the place, it's the people in that place. I can dig it. Yeah, yeah. And they gonna remain very nameless on my show because that place don't even matter that much on my show. No okay. cap. But I just I had it with the shenanigans. <clears throat> like I'm a person that I'm I'm working at taking me serious, and I don't think that they took what we were doing serious. Mm, yeah, I can see that. And when people are being mocked, mm-hmm. or people are being assholes, to so people who are actually trying to um, perfect a crowd, it takes the, the fun out of that for me, and it takes the joy out of that for me. For sure. And for me, the last time I was there, I was just over it. I was over it because, one, I'm not here to argue with people about what I do or about what it's mine. Yeah, and I I was just over it, but it was crazy because like that same I think I had pulled up and then you pulled right up, and when you pulled up, you came in and you just bought the place down in a few fucking minutes. It's like he walked in, got on the mic, and bought the place down. Yeah, I was I think I was late that night. I think we all were kind of late that night because I came like right after I did the show, and everybody's like. You doing the set tonight? It's like I do a set. Yeah. And um, I just I've been noticing like people say shit that really it's just to get under your skin. Oh yeah. And the person that I am like it's not gonna get under my skin, but it is gonna get on my nerves. For sure. Because you're doing the shit just to say something. Because people usually have something to say, even if that shit don't mean anything. There's a lot of people who get off on trying to make the comedians uh, feel bad or trying to get under the comedian's skin. You deal with you deal with that shit. That shit don't never stop. There's always somebody that go to a comedy show and thinking they funnier than whoever's on stage because <laughs> they didn't. They was funny in school, or they funny at work, or some shit, or something. Too many people done told them they funny, but they don't really have like the uh, the confidence to get on stage and even try it, and to, they don't have the confidence to fail at it to get good. So yeah. they sit and talk shit from the seats. You know what I'm saying? And they like, oh yeah, well I made the the comedian fumble today, bro. Like they don't they don't really mean that because that comedian is gonna get stronger, and you still gonna be on the other side. So it really don't matter. Right. But I will say this. I just, two weeks ago, that was my point. That was it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. That was it. And, and literally, I went against my judgment when I said I wasn't going to come back. I went against my judgment and went back. Yeah. And even going against my judgment and I came back, I, I understood why. Like, I can't, because I have a, to- a short tolerance for dumb shit and I'm allergic to bullshit. For sure. And um, it just it, it it canceled it out for me. It was like I, I don't have to do this here. I can do this anywhere. I don't have to do this. Yeah. And I just didn't want to take away from what y'all do because I know that 
I'm not a comic the way that y'all are comics. Y'all been doing this shit longer than me. And the person that I am, if I'm not comfortable in the space, I'm not going to make myself stay in this space. For sure. But I do want to encourage y'all to continue to do what it is that y'all do because y'all are making a difference. It's just I can't be a part of that crowd. Yeah, so yeah. I may come Thursday nights. Oh, for sure. Pull up. But Wednesdays, I think <laughs> they officially lost me. Nah, I, I feel it's uh, it's different rooms that show. I feel like every room sharpens a different skill. So you got different rooms that may sharpen, and that may not be conducive to actually trying to structure your jokes or work your jokes out. And you got rooms that uh, where you can just strengthen your your you know what I'm saying like your gift of gab. You know what mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And I think different rooms require different mind states to go in. There's some rooms that I uh, that I go in, I'm like, yeah, man, I'm going to work on this joke that I've been writing on. And I walk in and I try that and the joke fails. Not because the joke trash. It's because niggas want to hear buffoonery. They don't want to hear a well-thought-out joke. They want to hear some some crazy shit. Or they want to just talk to you the whole time. You know what I'm saying? So... You gotta, you, it, it take, it's not even it take, you, you learn which rooms are for what and what's the, what you gonna tolerate and shit. So it's like, if I go in here, I know I'm not gonna take this serious because they don't take the room serious. And I'm gonna just work on this skill right here. I'm gonna just work on trying to do this. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. Feel that. Um, the next question is how have your priorities changed since you started your business? Ooh, uh, <clears throat> uh, they haven't. <laughs> um, pretty much, they probably should, but my, my whole, I think my biggest thing is to create a space for me and kids that was like me growing up and just people like me to be able to uh, function and live off of uh, their their creativity. It's so hard. It's, it, being a creative is very very hard because it's a lot of trials and tribulations you got to go through just to be looked at to be considered to do some work for somebody you can't just walk in just like you go to mcdonald's you can fill out a resume nine times out of ten you're gonna get a job just to flip some burgers and take some cash or you go to school for something for certain you know what i'm saying you just i'm a doctor so i go find a hospital and i'm not diminishing it because it's all work but it's very hard to say Hey, I draw. I've been drawing for this amount of time, or I make music, or I write poetry, I do this, and to find something that's going to continuously pay. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the things, besides the way capitalism is set up for our society in America, the other thing is the arts aren't taken seriously in a lot of the formative years of children. Art is always an elective or a hobby, and it's never a job to be taken seriously unless you're an instructor. And they don't even treat the art teachers with respect. You know what I'm saying? Like, every art teacher gets shitted on. Nine times out of ten. So, you know what I'm saying? You get an elective. I'm like, I- I'll take art because it's easy, man. I got some crayons. You know what I'm saying? So niggas don't, like, really, you know, really, people don't take it take it serious from first grade to, they stop taking art serious after, like, elementary. You did really after first grade. After first grade. Yeah, so it's like after that, it's like, all right, is he going to play football, basketball? Is she going to do this, that, and third, dance on? So it's not. Yeah. I so know. I, I, go ahead. I, go I ahead. was going to say, uh, just I, I would like to, because I know how hard it is to try to make a living being an artist. You have to do so much just to be okay. And then, so I just, I, my main focus is to try to make something, figure it out, and then funnel that shit for everybody else. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I can definitely tell you, I knew that. I wasn't going to do the standard shit. I've been singing since I was nine. So singing, was gonna, I, I felt like singing was going to take me out the hood. So I yeah. thought. Yeah. And when you are an artist, artists are very much overlooked because artists are not, we're not the typical people that people are expecting us to be. Right. Everyone says, well, why won't you go and do this? Or why won't you go and do that? Or why won't you play sports? I'm like, I don't want to play sports. Yeah. That's not my passion. That's not what my heart is. That's not something I can do for free and get paid. For sure. So I knew when I was young, like art, painting, singing, yeah. I didn't see me doing a lot of the shit that I was doing now, but music, that was always on the list. And 
I, I can even tell you, even when I was in school, like a lot of people who who did music when we were in middle school, a lot of them are not doing that today, but I'll say like 25% of the people that I was in music classes with in middle school yeah. are all doing something that's dealing with music. Yeah. On some level, even when I went to high school, they thought I was in the band because I hung out with the band, um, with all the band members all the time. I was like, I don't play band. I have to support music. Yeah, I hung out in the band, Wayne. Yeah. But even with that, like, I get, um, we got like a, a thing going on right now where the band is trying to uh, come back together and they, they send me messages in the, in, the, in the group. I'm like, okay. I wasn't in the band, but I'll come through. For sure. Shit, shit. A little tea time. We can come through with a little tea time. No cap. Do a live show in the we'll band. Do a and get it. But you definitely made a point where you spoke on art. Um, even when I was in college, when our art professors in college, they they did not take this man serious because they felt like what he was doing was a joke. I was like, nah. Mm -hmm. Art is very, very important in the development of brain, in your brain. Your brain learns some structure. And art has its place in every area of our lives. It's just we don't incorporate that into it that way. We don't think about it like that. Until you're in that. If, like, if you're thinking of it that way and you see it, you're like, okay. But people who don't live in that, in that mind space, because artists, we think with this side of our fucking brain. Yeah, yeah. All of the time. And having to be a creative all of the time, that shit can hurt sometimes when you don't see your shit moving. Man. So crushing. Yeah, but I done came and crashed a couple of y'all sets and y'all done pulled my ass on stage. And yeah. we done made magic happen. We made yeah. magic happen. I'm, I'm still trying to understand. Like, I don't even understand how was I able to be in that space and kill shit but man that shit it, it it really i'm not a uh i'm not a supernatural person but to speak of it in a supernatural sense like the comedy uh i don't know for lack of a better term the comedy gods they kind of pick they it's you it's already in you know what i'm saying like it's even if you never thought about doing it you get on stage and you, it, you'll find you'll find your place you know what i'm saying yeah I can tell you this, like, even when we were doing, because I told y'all, I was good at doing roast battles when we were in school. Yeah, yeah. Roast battles is what I I thrived on because I have a very quick wit. Mm -hmm. And them roast battles used to go down in science class. Shout out to everybody at Burn High School. <laughs> in my science class. Shout out to Christopher Kelly, who was my, who was my rival. Your rival? He was my rival in ninth grade. He was my rival. He was the dude that I went up against in all the roast battles in science class. Man. This this dude literally made me the thick skinned witted motherfucker I am today. Yeah, yeah. That, see, that's that's why I feel like all black. That's why black people are so funny. That's why black Twitter is so funny because we all pretty much live that same experience. Mm -hmm. Just. Fucking, you know, they used to call it Jonesing, the dozen, roasting, find them up, all that shit. Like, we, pretty much everybody had that same experience. Like, and it was like, the, it was this weird thing of like, you you hate it, but you love it at the same time. Because it's embarrassing if you get, you get fired up in class and everybody laugh and you, you be like, oh, 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 oh. Like, you start stuttering. Oh, it. But <clears throat> it builds thick skin. It builds character and shit at the same time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like niggas can't really talk to you crazy. Like niggas can't say nothing to you crazy and you not have something to say back. Uh, if you don't have something to say back, you like you know what? Let me not say something because you gonna get mad. And I don't feel like dealing with you being mad, but you started with me. So yeah, nah. I can definitely tell you. I didn't realize how funny I was until I realized how funny I was. And when them damn jokes would fall off my like, mind, yep. like, uh, the shit would be funny to me because I was like, damn, you can't know what that that Hell yeah. 
like on the spot. Like now I'm beginning to I appreciate the roast battles from then, cause now doing roast battles now, yeah. you got to be tough on your feet. Quick okay. on your feet. Quick on your feet. And we've seen some roast battles go down. <laughs> Look, man. <laughs> it's I wish uh, I really wish a lot of that stuff was recorded. Like a lot of the fight shit was recorded. We can just go back to it. Cause people, if, a lot of people who wasn't there, they'll never understand how funny that shit was. It was. We, you know what we need to do one night? We need to do just a night where it's nothing but a roast battle. I am with that. I'll come through and cut up all night. I'm gonna, put, I'm gonna bring your uh, your arch nemesis. Bring them. Uh, the one that uh, walked out on you. Bring them. Bring them. I, I just, I, I gotta see that again. There's no, absolutely no fear here, friend. Absolutely no fear. He's, that shit gonna be funny. I didn't even know <laughs> that I was gonna say that night. I didn't even know what I was gonna say. That be that be the part you never know what's gonna happen, but some shit gonna happen. Yeah, like I was sitting there and I was thinking about that joke, and then so I said, "Nah, you need to say that joke." And yeah. I said, that shit. You and, doing that man whole night? <clears throat> yeah, like it was so crazy because everybody busted out laughing. I looked around, and I was like, "Maybe I can do this." Oh yeah. I was, bro, I was shocked because I, I seen, I, all I heard was a mic drop and then he walked, could have walked to the door and then come back in the door and yell something and he just stormed off and then everybody was like, yeah, he's not allowed back no more. <laughs> was Dude, like, that was the funniest shit. And even with me, like, I was like, was that supposed to happen? <laughs> no, no, no. That. All I can tell you is I, I do have a lot of my shit. Like, shout out to Pearl if she watching. Oh, yeah, yeah, Pearl, yeah. she 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 definitely gets all of the footage, and she got oh, some yeah, shit. Yeah. That, she got some shit that night where I was like, let me go back and watch that. Yeah, I had to post that shit. The whole show. Yeah, it, like I could definitely tell you the next time, let's let's just focus on doing a rose battle to see how quick witted people can really be. Can't wait. Like we can do jokes, we yeah. can do jokes, but I'm about that roast battle. Oh, that's your shit. That's my shit. I come through for a roast battle. I hate how they kept putting me and you up against each other, cause I had one percent <laughs> joke one night and I didn't say it. I kept yeah. thinking. I kept thinking it and thinking it and thinking it. The way you kept spinning in that chair. This man here, here, yeah. I remember that night too. I was ready yeah. to go. The joke, this is the joke. I was going to walk over and act like I was flushing the toilet. Just took the good shit. That, it would have been good that, that night. You should have said that. In that moment. Yeah. But it's not a good one right now. It's one of them in the moment jokes. It's in the moment jokes. <laughs> You had to be the, said, why is he standing in that chair? And then I was like, that nigga got shit. <laughs> that got shit. Oh my god. I, like, okay. I see the joke. I see the joke. Um, no. On the next question, what challenges mm -hmm. did you overcome on your journey? Ooh, so many. Um, I, one of them, I'm going to say, is not a, I didn't really overcome it. It's a constant overcoming or battle. Uh, I'll say um, just dealing with depression, anxiety, that whole situation. Um, just feeling like that and existential crisis. I deal. I deal. I dealt with them a lot more in the past two to three years, more than I have over my whole life. But um, that uh, one big one is a lot of people think that. A lot of the class clowns become comedians. I wasn't a class clown. I, I, I was a class clown in elementary school uh, a couple of years. But um, naturally, I'm a very quiet person. Or I was growing up. Mm -hmm. So it took a lot for me to open up. Once I got comfortable with people in the classroom, then I started talking. That's when my mouth would get me in trouble. Um, but right off, I just, I'd be real reserved and observing and shit. Um, but a lot of people who know me, 
and knew me before they knew I did comedy, a lot of them didn't think that I was funny enough to be a comedian. A lot of them knew me as Funny Mark, but a lot of people didn't. So when I started doing comedy, niggas was not coming to the shows because it was like, oh, this nigga just, this nigga think he can do everything. This nigga not funny. Mm-hmm. But and just recently, a lot of people saw me that I've known for years saw me perform for the first time hosting the show, and they were just like, "Nah, nigga, you, you funny," and they were saying that uh, like I had been lying for the past five years. But you know, that's one thing. You know, it'd it be like that. But um, because mm-hmm. you know, black people take comedy very seriously. Like when you say you're funny, they have a certain expectation. So if you do not hit that mark, no matter how funny you actually are, if you don't hit what black people think you should be, you're not funny. Right. So, it that was one thing that just like for people to actually see because I don't really like to be like, yeah, no, I'm funny for real. Like I, I rather just put the words in and show. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that was one. Um, I'm not a father, so that's a that's another one. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we never had that conversation. (laughs) Yes, I beat the case, so nigga. We free, you know what I'm saying? I'm out here. Okay, basically that's that conversation. <laughs> In short words, that's yeah. that conversation. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, yeah. I will tell you this though. When I was, just, I, I'm, I consider myself to be a nerd. For I sure. consider myself to be a nerd. So when I, when I was younger. And I did consider myself to be a nerd. I was like, nah, you're going to have to toughen up a little bit, kid. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's when every everybody started taking jabs. Because I used to have, like, a big-ass fro when I was in ninth grade. Oh, really? And I was in here. So right. I looked like a fucking used Q-tip. Damn. Looked like a microphone, nigga. Bad part. Hell the yeah. I, the I look just like this. I know they was giving you the blues. Oh, dude. No, that's not the worst. I had a classmate. She cut a patch into my throat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cuss that. That's, fuck. that's messed up, man. That shit was so epic. I walked out the room. Yeah. And, like, what's up with your bro? I was like, what's up with my bro? Yeah. Big ass kid, Mark. What did she cut with some scissors or a razor? Like what? She did it with some scissors when I had fell asleep in class one day, man. That's all black. It was the epicest shit. That was the funniest shit that ever happened. After that, yeah. The dude, my nemesis, who I was going up against in ninth grade. Yeah. yeah. That was shit for like a week. I was like, that's all you got for the week, my nigga. That's it. Trashed them. I trashed them after that. I was like, yeah, yeah. if that's all we're going to talk about is my hair. Oh, yeah. Let's let's go in deep on you. I think I roasted this dude so bad during our freshman year in high school that even at the, I left our high school, me and him, we were, we, I don't think me and were never really friends after that. I've not been there. I don't think we were friends. Uh, we worked together at one point in time, but we and we tried to be friends at work, and that's like, nah, nigga. I yeah. used to coach you in high school. And we not. Yeah. Like I was like five four, like a hundred pounds. This nigga had to be like maybe like maybe 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 six feet. Yeah. Heavy dude, and used to go in on that like, dude, that, you ain't gonna. You might beat my ass up, but you're not gonna beat yeah. me at these jokes. Yeah, you're not gonna out shit talk me, bro. You're not gonna out shit talk me. No. I used to out shit talk this dude so bad that his friends were like, we gonna be friends with him because obviously this nigga know what he doing. For sure. That's when I, I, I never took it that serious, though. I just, I never took me being funny that serious. Yeah. And then, like, all my friends, they would be like, Jerry, you, you, you funny. Yeah, yeah. But it would be just like we like how we having a casual conversation and I yeah, just yeah. say some crazy shit. They'd be like, nah, Jerry, man, you funny. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm just being regular, man. Being me. So yeah. 
I never perceived it like that. Now I'm beginning to perceive it like that. Like, jump in that water, man. Which is you already jumped in the water, so. Yeah, I've been I've been in and out of the pool a couple of times. Been to deep in. Um, wearing speedos when it's time to go swim. <laughs> this is my head, dog. <laughs> That's it. See, prime example. Prime yeah. example. Right there. Prime example. Oh shit, that's funny. That shit yeah. crazy. I'll be like. I'm gonna have to go back and watch the show and get that joke. I'm gonna have to go back and write that down. Oh yeah, write that shit down. Um, so the next question is, what strategies did you use first to market your business? But before you answer that question, you yeah. said a lot of profound shit that I wanted to kind of go back in on. Um, on the outside looking in, you don't seem like the type of person that would be going through anything because you always seem to be on top of the world when I see you. Appreciate that. I'll be trying to, uh, you know, trying to maintain when I'm out. I don't really go out. Like I said, when I'm, I don't go out that much. Uh, usually it's a show that I'm going to that I'm performing or the homies performing or some shit like that. I might go to something, but I don't go out that much. I don't go out all the time every weekend. But uh, <clears throat> if I'm out, I try to be uh, in a better head space. Try. You know, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't really like to burden motherfuckers with what I got going on because very particular who I share what with and also I don't like to feel like I'm overbearing anybody with my shit. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's important. That's important. Because who you let into your life, that shit will define who who's important in your life. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So I, I feel that. Um back to that question, what strategies did you use first to market your business? Mm, let's see. Uh so first tech my first closing line uh was in 2010, 2011. Uh, I had Fresh Prince, and it was uh, F R E S H P R I N T S, and it was a play on like the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Mm -hmm. But we were doing uh, printed T-shirts, so it was like a lot of uh, screen printed T-shirts. And I came up with a logo. I, I studied, like I said, with the comedy, every even with the clothes. I studied a lot of people. Um, but growing up, my biggest biggest influence was. A uh, dude named Nigo. He's a Japanese dude, and he best friends with Pharrell. And he did uh, he did a lot of collabs with Cause, which is another one of my favorite artists growing up. Cause, Pharrell, Kanye, people like that. So when Pharrell started his ice cream brand, mm -hmm. I he when he put out his album, Pharrell put his album out in I want to say oh seven, I think. Mm -hmm. You put that out, he had a website, and you could create your own, like, uh, Nigo had these vape characters from, you know, the brand uh, Bavinate or B-A-P-E, so mm -hmm. he had these characters, and he made one for Pharrell, and then they made a game where you could make your own. I spent hours on there making, like, my own Pharrell vape character and shit, and I always wanted to know how to make shit like that. Never knew. Long story short, uh, I got a Mac, and then I got, like, a... a pirated version, a legal version of Photoshop and Illustrator. I did it on, I learned Photoshop first, self-taught, learned all that shit. Then I uh, figured out he was using Illustrator and all that. So saying all that to say, I studied a lot of people that I liked <coughs> in their, <coughs> what I perceived to be their marketing strategy for so at that time. People weren't putting all their business out there. You just had to watch them and see what they do. Mm -hmm. so I figured out a lot of stuff and, you know, interviews and books and shit like that. And I learned about quantity i mean quality over quantity and i was already a very detailed artist so like i never wanted to put out and i to this day i do the same thing i never i never put out like 50 i don't buy 50 t-shirts and then be like oh i'm gonna go sell all these i'd rather put out uh 10 to 15 or whatever number scale it to however big my business is to uh and then it's more and i never re-release them like once they're gone that's it if you didn't hop on it and you missed out. Oh. That creates, that creates like a um, what's the thing? It creates an art uh, archive, and it creates mm -hmm. also a demand for products. So then I'm like, I really wanted that T-shirt, but I slept on it because I thought it was gonna put it out again, and I thought I had time. I'm not gonna miss the next one, and I'm I'm gonna make sure if I like it, I'm gonna go ahead and try to get it. And then some people are gonna miss out because if just say for instance, if you do 50 T-shirts and your business scale is at like 100. Guaranteed buyers, 
50 people are going to miss out, 50 people are going to get it. <clears throat> the same 50 might not be the same 50 from the last shirt. So it's going to create this hype. And then other people that, the same model that um, Bait, Jordan, and Nike do with their shoes now because they figured out what's going on. Because people started buying a lot of retro Jordans. People started getting into it. Like it was a small pocket of people who bought shoes. Mm -hmm. but after like 2013, niggas like started to buy shoes for real, for real, like it was in the 90s. So Jordan will put out for uh, just hypothetically speaking, they'll put out a hundred of a pair of shoes. A thousand people want them. But then other people will buy them and then resell them for a certain amount. So that creates more hype. And now, if I'm Jordan, I put out shoes at 105 last year. Niggas is spending a thousand on them. I'm going to put these shoes out for 250 now. And they still going to buy them. Branding goals. For sure. Branding goals. And that's the truth because I've even been in that position <laughs> where. Shit, I done seen some shit. I'm like, no, let me go and catch that real quick. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yep. And when he was gone, it's like, happy I got mine first. No cap. Yeah, yeah. And that's another thing, too. That's a, a big part about it, too. We we, um, we socialize our, uh, our merchandise. So, like, if somebody, <clears throat> if somebody has a certain thing of whatever social value, even though other people can get it, I got it first. I was on it before everybody else was. So I'm a leader of that. And even if you don't wear it no more, you still like, that was me back in 2005. I was wearing that shit before y'all was on it. You know what I'm saying? So that's another part of thinking ahead with your brand, too. You know what? Having this conversation? Yeah. You've been here before, friend. Oh, shit. I feel like it sometimes. You've been here before. You know branding well. For sure. For sure. You, yeah. you, you. Barely done your research on branding. You barely done your research on your craft. Oh, yeah. You study comedy the way I study music. No, oh, yeah. Can you read music? I cannot read music. This is the thing with it. Yeah. I never was trained in music. For real, you just picked it I up. Never it. I actually, I didn't know I could sing until I was nine. Yeah. Okay. When I found out I could sing, I was just in church. And that's where I found out I could sing. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, but if if I would have been trained in music early, mm -hmm. I'd be the shit now. Which I'm the shit now. For sure. I'm the shit now. But I would be more of the shit. Yeah, I dig what you're saying. Um, because this was like one thing that I, I start I, I took a, a piano class in college. I prefer that you don't do that late in life. I prefer you do that shit early. Right, bro. I took um, music class in Southern and I'll never do it again. Oh. Like, I'll do a choir class. Yeah. I, I get now harmonized, but don't ask me to read no notes. Don't ask me to play no instruments. It's not in my forte. For sure. But you you definitely have an eye for branding. Appreciate it. Um, and you have an ear for branding. You can brand like a motherfucker. And that was something that I, I, I discovered when I was going through my page, your page during research. I was like, this dude know how to brand. Branding ain't for, and branding is not something that you can just do by the seam of your pants. No. You got to really think that shit out and really think it through. Like, and it's like a one of my, my third book of poetry right now that I put out, Quarantine Quest. There's a piece in there that's called This Place Makes Me Sick. When I actually start promoting that book, I have, I'm have i going to have to find some socks or something that's going to help me promote that particular piece. Yeah. In a way where I can say, like, why the fuck is he wearing those socks? But then they hear that piece. Yeah. Hey. That's branding shit. For sure. And you you have you definitely have an eye for branding because even when I was just checking out what you were doing, like you would have your mo your models would be dressed and they would be in their own like their own lane and then you would be the standout person. Yeah. That's like yeah, he did his research on branding. Like uh -huh. And, and growing up in the 90s, we had a lot, a lot, 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 lot of people that we could take and pull from, oh, yeah. from the 90s. Um, it seemed like you, you, you studied 
Russell Simmons. Mm. I can't say that you did, but it seemed like you did. Um, because you, you understand how, how us as black people, you understand how to market black people. You know how to do that. That was one thing I saw. I was like, he know how to brand for black people. You can brand. You know how to brand your ass off. And that's, sure. not, that's, that's not something like. Oh, no. It's... You got a heavy brand. That's why I'm like, what are you doing here? Uh, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to make it up out of that. Yo, the way your brand is set up right now, you head in places. You head in places. You just got to keep fishing. Just gotta oh, keep fishing. Man, I'm so tired of fishing, nigga. <laughs> but nah, you right. <coughs> oh, it, it's, it's, it's not easy. I've been, you've been probably working at your crab a little longer than I've been working in mine. Um, I've been a full time artist for the last two years, but I've been doing this for five. This shit ain't easy. Shit, nah. And especially for black men, man, it ain't easy. In the city too, in the ranch. Yeah, you ain't got no money. Man, <clears throat> over with. It's over with. But I, I'm saying, I'm saying all that to say this: your brand is going somewhere. Appreciate it. Bro. You are definitely working your ass off because I see your work ethic. I see what you do, and every fucking week you doing comedy two, three, four, five times a week. Right. Keep going. Sure. Keep going. But I definitely want to say we need to get that, that roast battle off the ground. And when we do that roast battle, we need somebody that'll film that roast battle. 100%. Because we, we need to get this shit off the ground. That that's the I think that's the biggest problem. Is, uh, or I don't want to say problem, but uh, that's the biggest solution. Um, having somebody to film. To film everything. Then oh, I know some people. Yeah, yeah. We have to, we have to brainstorm. We have to get some French fries and shit and go and sit and talk about that. Right. Um, the next question is, how do you define success? Uh, how do I define success? Uh, all right, so are you speaking in generally or specifically? How do you, Mark Few, define uh, success? All right, I'll say it like this. For define success generally, uh, success is whatever the person you know, whatever is their goal and their achievement. My success would be to, generally speaking, without making giving too many words, being able to not only survive but to thrive off of uh, financially speaking, off of my uh, creativity. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And being able to. Just like any other any other grown man wants to take care of their family and all that shit, whether it's through they the job they work or job they created, I want to be able to do that with my art, because that's the only thing in this work, this life that makes sense for me, and it's the only thing I'm gonna always excel at. You know, I've worked for so many different people, so many different companies, but uh, all of that always makes me feel bad because it's taking me away from what I really want to be doing. A lot of people, you know, I grew up, uh, I grew up religious. And everybody would always say, you know, ask God to direct you to where he wants you to go and he's going to show you. But even me not being religious, at, even at the time, I already knew where I was supposed to be at. But it's like everything else is fighting to take me away from it. So I'm just trying to figure out a way where I'm doing it, if not 100% of the time, because I know I got to give time to my friends and family and shit. But at least a majority of my time, if I'm going to spend my time doing something as far as work, why not that be something that I'm already good at? Right. You know what I'm saying? So if I could make if when I make that happen, that'll be that'll be my success story. I know it's just it's not a it's not a matter of making it. A lot of people are like, oh, well, I made it. You don't ever really stop making it. You dig what I'm saying? You're always mm -hmm. doing something. But if I can get to the position where I'm doing that, that'd be cool. <clears throat> okay, so you are a comedian. Yeah, yeah. And I am going to take the chance to ask a not hypothetical question. It's a wishful thinking question. I should say it like that. Uh, wishful thinking. If you could work with five 
comedians in the business, who would they be? I bet. So Dave Chappelle on top. Yeah, Dave. You got Tom Segura. Uh, Eddie Murphy. Um, Louis Black. And then number five is gonna be hard because it's like easily fifteen people. Um, Jesus Christ. Uh, 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 this is going to sound so off the wall, but I, mean, I would just even love to have a conversation with Redbox. Oh. Let me go. Let me go. Even true. Redbox is oh. true. If, if I could, if I could have a, uh, I, 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 I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Let me, I'm going to have to take somebody off that list and say Patrice. You can take anybody else off that list. Patrice O'Neal. I'm top. For sure. Red, red fox. That was my boy. My, my, me and my dad. When we would, when he was living, we would kick it, and he always watched goddamn Sanford and Son. Yes. At some point in my life, I felt like the month. <laughs> yeah. Sitting next to my goddamn father all the time. Like this is your favorite shit. And then after he was gone. And I would sit back and I would watch Sanford and Son. I'd be like, yeah, I see why this is his joint. It's, it's, it's hilarious. That's a good show. And it's a it, dude running around Shreveport that looked like Grady. <laughs> I just want you to know that. It's somebody granddaddy out there that looks just like Grady. And he be driving a <laughs> That's the truth. No cap. That's the truth. The final question. Uh, What's the best advice you can give someone thinking about starting a business or pursuing their dreams? Uh, all right, I'm going to answer both of them separately. Starting a business, do your research first and find people that know what the fuck they're talking about and listen to them. Do your research and talk to people that <laughs> do business. Mm -hmm. get, uh, get friendly with people that are good at finance, if you're not, because I'm trash at that, and good with numbers if you're not. But find people you can trust. Uh, long story short, I started a business with a homie against my better judgment, and I let, I allowed some shit, taking full responsibility, I allowed a lot of shit to go down. I was doing a lot of yelling. Niggas was calling me Kanye when I had that first love of mine, because I have, like, I brought, my, my thinking with that shit was, if it's your shit, if I'm on your shit, I'm doing what you saying, because you got the vision, and you know how the shit want to be done. Mm -hmm. When it's my shit, and I'm bringing y'all on, I understand that y'all friends, but... I'm taking this shit very seriously, and if y'all niggas is playing or not doing what I'm saying, it's not no power trip shit. It's this is how it's run. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but this is how it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So, be be mindful of who you work with too. Realize what type of people you're dealing with as far as business goes. Um, contracts are important. As far as pursuing your dreams, um, it's hard to know. It's hard to tell when a motherfucker is crazy. Or when they just a genius that everybody thinks is crazy. So pursue your dreams and if you got a vision, go for it. You might be crazy, you might not, but you'll never know until you're on the other side. So keep going. Brilliant shit. Brilliant shit. And to piggyback on something that you were saying, you can't work with your friends. That's oh, very hard. And if you have if you have business friendships or you have people that are really, really, really business oriented and they understand the shit, then it's possible, but the homies, a lot of times the homies don't be caring, and the homies have the other shit going on, so it's like, and I'm not speaking from just like, I'm always the business, I'm, I'm the homie too, sometimes I don't do shit the right way, so. Right, that's something that, but now that I'm learning, like, yeah. we want to bring everybody in. Yep. Not everybody built for what you're doing. Everybody can't go to everywhere. Everybody can't go everywhere. Mm -hmm. I need certain people for certain places to do certain shit. Yep. Yeah. I that that reminded me of some shit I heard. Uh I didn't see this interview, but I saw this clip. I think it was uh fucking it really doesn't matter. New York rapper from Dipset. Cameron, Cameron. Cameron I said, uh he said something that I was like, damn, this is crazy. He said everybody is here to be used, but you don't misuse people. Like, we're all here to be used, you know, because it's a negative connotation with being used. Like, we all mm -hmm. useful. We all have a useful attribute, whatever it is, but don't misuse people. You dig know what I'm saying? Right. So, yeah. 
We all here to serve. That's what you better serve. say. For sure. Don't do yourself a disservice. There you go. Yes, anyway. Go ahead and drop your third poetry book. It's already out. May the first quarantine quest available okay. right now. Amazon.com. No cap. Go get it. No Amazon.com okay. right now. Put that yeah, in the I comments. Got some, I, I got some shit going. I ain't, I, I ain't just asleep. Oh no, you you I know you ain't bullshit. I thought it was coming. It's already out. No, 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 no. May first. It's been out. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was two months ago. Yeah. When it look like I'm not working, I'm working. Oh no, nigga. Every time I talk to you, you be like, no, I just got done doing some shit. You you be there. Yeah. I'm 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 trying to make something out of nothing. How you doing that, my And dude? I'm trying to make a dollar out of ten cents, not fifteen. Yeah. Oh, well, with that being said, we're going to dive into candy or corn. I am going to ask you about these candies. If you eat these candies, you can say candy. If you would not eat these candies, you can say corn. Corn, C-O-R-N? C-O-R-N. All right. All right, first candy. Dive Stopper. Candy. The next one is 100 grand. Corn like a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. Nah. Keep it. All right. The next one is candy corn. Corn like a motherfucker. Drown it. All right. Roll oats. Uh, this one sounds crazy, but I don't think I ever had them, so corn. Feel that? The next one is Heath Bar. <laughs> Corn. <laughs> All right. Mike and Ike's. Candy, so. I eat candy like a project baby, so. Touche. <clears throat> Touche. You know what I'm saying? Um, next candy is Mound. Corn. Skittles. If it's sour, then uh, candy for sure. But I'll, I'll just say candy because Skittles got some fire shit. I grew up on Skittles for sure. That's my joint. You got to, you ain't, you ain't tried, well, I, they already recalled them. I can't say that now. Um, they had these Skittles gummies. They got recalled. Oh, yeah. yeah. Them sour Skittles gummies was the shit. Yes. <laughs> okay. They was the joint. Um, the next candy is Twix. Oh, candy. And the final candy is Gummy Bears. And what candy? Gotcha. That's candy or corn. I got I got one more. I got to ask you one. Hershey cookies and cream. You asking me that? Yeah, yup. Yeah. That's my joint. That's, no that's, that's candy. That I, I done had birthday cakes with hey, the yeah. oreo cookies and cream, friend. What? Yes, I've had maybe two birthday cakes with the Hershey's cookies and cream. Nah, I'm gonna need that. I'm gonna need to give me one. Whoever made your cake, Brooks. Brooks. Bet. Nah, you don't. Sister, I'm gonna ask my sister. Yeah, go we don't. Cream. You don't use that buttercream shit. When you making that that when you making that cake, you yeah. don't use that buttercream shit. We need that that whips. No kids. I don't even like cake, but I eat that. Boy, you you've been sleeping. Uh, I don't fuck with cake. Sleeping. You ain't had the the Oreos cookies and cream cake. I didn't even know that was possible. Keep the buck. Yeah, yeah. You gotta get. It's got to be the chocolate cake. Oh, for real? It's got to be the chocolate cake. With the Wilkes frosting, with the Oreos. I'm I'm gonna trust you on it. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try it one time. No, trust me. Trust me on this, man. I've had two cakes. <clears throat> man, ate them both by myself. Damn, nigga. Yeah, it's legit like that. It's just Oreos is still my favorite cookie. I haven't been eating it as much, but <laughs> Oreos. <laughs> as a as an undefeated treat. That part. That part. With that being said, I know that you are a working man, and I know you're always promoting 
your shows, where you're going to be, what you're going to be Let the people know where they can follow you. Let them know about your next gigs. And let uh, the people know how to plug you. For sure. So uh, I say this. We do every Thursday. Well, first of all, you can follow me on Instagram at MarkPugHJR. We on Facebook. So if you don't, if you ain't a friend of me on Facebook, click that follow and shit. Uh, you can ask me to repeat anything I'm finna say. Um, you got Pew Studio on uh, Instagram, P U G H S T U I. I mean S T U D I O. Hopefully you can spell better than I can. Um, let's see, we have uh, Thursdays at the club, comedy club downtown, six one eight Commerce Street, the LOL Laugh Out Loud Comedy Lounge. We do an open mic there every Thursday. Um, this Saturday. This is on some music shit. This Saturday we'll be at uh, Bears for Bears Fest. It's a big ass music festival in Highland at uh, Bears on Fairfield. That should be lit. Every oh yeah, year. I'm on that on the show. You you sure did. Yeah, I appreciate that. Seeing that, we'll be down there on Saturday. I'll be rapping with my brothers for the first time in a long time. Me, Justin Jackson, Cordell. Uh, it's a lot of other bands. Also, Bond Plus is gonna be there. That's the homies. Uh, who else? It's a, it's a lot of people on that show, and it's gonna be food out there, vendors. You already talked about it, but I'm just reiterating. Yeah, I just I just saw the event while I was doing the um the transcript for tonight's show. I was like, okay, bears. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I gotta give me a ticket for that. I'm gonna come through. For sure, pull up, man. We are we supposed to get set times? I think we just got set times while we was on uh while we was doing the interview. So um I'll be posting set times and shit. So, you know what I'm saying? If you want to come around us or just want to know what the schedule like. Definitely let me get that set schedule because I'm a, I'm a, I'm promoting the events this week. That's so, it. I'll be promoting your event all week on the show. Well, I'll be promoting the event all week on the show. Right. And if, you, right. if there's something specific that you need me to let people know about, For sure, I'll let you know. detail that, and we can add yeah. that for this week's transcript. Okay, okay. Uh, any more show? I think July. 15th, I'll be in Rose City, um, which is Tyler, Texas. I believe it's the 15th, 14th, 15th, or 16th. But like I said, if you follow me on something, I'll post it. So, and then I'll let you know, and then you'll let them know and shit. So, yeah, I, I promote people here, so sure. keep me posted. Will do. Keep me posted. Um, well, it's been a great night. I'm hungry again. I'm about to go and cook because I had some salad, but I want to actually cook. Yeah. Um, so it's been a great night hanging out. Same, bro. You already know what it is. Thanks for coming through for Absolutely. helping Thanks me for having me. tonight. Um, yes. it's been cool. You actually different from comedy. You're different in person. No, you're yeah, more, yeah. you're more laid back and chill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I discovered. This is why people don't think I'm funny because I'll be chilling. People that yeah. know me, they know me like, this nigga not funny. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, in reality, he actually is funny. I just got to come to the shows. Push up. Yeah, yeah. Pull up. Just, just a shameless plug, I guess I could say. Just a shameless plug. Um, my mom is watching right now. My mom. What's up, mama? This was a great show. Good tea for me. My mom, she she supports what I do here with a little tea time. Oh, what's up? What's up, mama? How you doing? Yeah, see, I've been working with him, Mom. Yeah, yeah. He worked on, on a couple of things. That man is going places. He's a fucking star. You too, nigga. Um, but with that man, being I've said... I've in front of your mom. My fault, Mom. <laughs> oh, my mom, she real. Oh, yeah. Okay, then, hell yeah. We good, then. Okay. Yeah, my mom real. We, we, we from the hood, hood. Hell. My mama a gangster. We... Oh, yeah, we, my mama a gangster who know God. Hey. So, we good. We pray hard and we shoot. <laughs> we pray hard and we shoot. That's funny. No cap. <laughs> That's real gangster statement right there. <laughs> I just say that. Because it's the hey. truth. <laughs> That's why That's hey. we pray hard and we shoot. Okay. Sometimes you gotta pray before you shoot. Yeah, pray that we don't shoot the wrong person. Okay. <laughs> With that being said, 
Mark, you have a home here on the little tea time. You are always welcome to come through, hang out, talk shit, chill. Um, it's been a great night. No cap. It's been a great night. I appreciate you coming through. Um, thanks. Hell yeah. I don't, I don't know how to, I'm weird with saying goodbyes and shit, but I appreciate everything. No. Uh, see you later. Did you them too. Yeah, see you later and all that shit. Um, get out of here. Don't take yeah. it easy, bro. Push out, man. Be easy, y'all. So y'all take it easy. Gonna go eat. One This next. Peace. And that is tonight's show. Thank y'all for everyone who tuned in, for everyone who hung out. Thank you for everyone who shared tonight's show. Um, I had a great time tonight hanging out with Mr. Mark Pugh. This man is definitely going places. He is definitely an extraordinaire um, and a very bright, brilliant mind. Very bright, brilliant mind. Um, but I definitely would love y'all to encourage um, other business owners, um, people of the community who are looking to promote their businesses or promote their brand. They do have a home here at the Little Tea Time. Um, I am always, always on the lookout for new talent, upcoming talent, business owners, entrepreneurs who are um, looking to come through, hang out, talk about their brand, promote their business, have some real conversation. Um, and just talk like regular people, you know? Um, but with that being said, got to wrap up the show. Um, again, I got to thank my guest tonight, Mr. Mark People, coming through, hanging out. Uh, everyone, 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 I need to encourage everyone to get over to SaucySongSpices.com and use my coupon code ALITTTOWN, one word, and receive 5% off of your purchases when you use that coupon code. Um, also, also, also check out Chef Saucy Spot as cookbook available right now on the website. Um, you can also go and check out my books at Agora Borellis at 421 Lake Street. Um, I did some shopping over there this past weekend. Found a great candle from Mr. Bean. Um, I got the candle over there. It's let me grab this candle real quick so I can show y'all. Now this candle smells very good. Brunch Vibes is the, the name of this one that I got. And um, I enjoyed it. Definitely smells really good. Um, also con, um, got some stickers and got some tea from Agora Borellis. Um, so I, I enjoyed my time with them. And um, Ben's Body Basics, this is another one of his products. So I want to encourage people just to get out there and, and get into his products. He's doing great things. And um, I'm just supportive of what he's doing. So I got a chance to get a candle from his brand besides the face treatments that I use. So definitely want to encourage people to get a candle. Um, also, y'all can check out my books at Amazon.com. It's Jarius Dion. Just type search Jarius, J-R-A-Y-I-S, Dion, D-E-Y-O-N-D. -E and thank you to everyone who supports the books, who purchased the books if you have them on your um media devices thank y'all so much for everyone who supports that um also you can check me out on tiktok at the jarius dion subscribe to my youtube channel at jerick a king among men thomas and finally if you have missed the shows you can also check the shows out on spotify at a lil t time so if y'all are interested in listening to the shows while you're in your car while you're on the train while you're on the plane Definitely can check it out. Um, just type search a little tea time. And with that being said, remember the show's quote opportunities knocking. You matter. Let's build and go higher, Shreveport. And as I say after every single show, remember to be great on purpose and not by accident. The future is now. I am your host of a little tea time jerick aka jrsd your favorite published author's favorite published author until the next show y'all enjoy y'all's night enjoy the week and be great and stay well 
right? Love y'all. Peace out. Welcome to the Y'all ready? Welcome to the Okay. Welcome to the All right. Welcome to the Welcome to the Good night, Mom. Love you, too. Y'all take care.